Ubumi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Do Nananik Show. We are live today broadcasting from the Inuval Communications Society here in Inuvik. My name is Margaret Kutsana, your host, and today we are doing a show that's a little bit different than we've done previously. We are doing a show with Tanya Grubin, and Tanya is broadcasting out of which building are you at, Tanya? Uh, we're in the CKLB building in Yellowknife. Yes. So I'm so excited. This is a new form of a show that we get to have. Um, being on, I don't know, oh, online. <laughs> on Zoom, I'm not sure what exactly it's on. So how are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for asking me. I'm really excited for today's show. Um, I wanted to ask you, Tanya, to maybe just give us, um, we are going to talk about your, your, your life and, and um, how you got into doing what you do, which you are a, you have your own radio show, music radio show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's start out at the beginning, like where you grew up, like where you're from. Okay, so so if anyone just tuned in, Margaret and I are cousins. Uh, her great grandmother and my grandfather, our grandmother, our sisters, our her great grandfather mm -hmm. and my grandfather are our brothers. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in Tak Tak Tiak Tak, um, and I uh, went to school in Inuvik. Mm, I lived in Inuvik actually up until January of this year. After working twenty three years with IRC as a landlord, I just spur of the moment took a life switch and decided to move to Yellowknife. Uh, I work for the GNWT here, um, but I DJ uh, once a week here on CKLB 101.9 FM. And I just have a two hour music show in the evenings and I, I love it. I absolutely love what I do. Yeah, so um, I have a list of questions here that we mm -hmm. went over <laughs> and I wanted to ask you so you have spent like I know that you have been doing years I'm assuming years by now with having connections with a ton of people and doing a lot of DJing DJing for events and public speaking yeah yeah so we can talk first like about the public speaking like how did you mm -hmm. get into doing public speaking so growing up in Tuck, which is a small community uh, i think it's a thousand people what they used to do is like if you were going to school there um they had say a, a um, christmas uh concert or um some kind of event they would pull a student and have the student uh, MC the event. And I was one of those students that would MC the Christmas concert or you know some kind of event. Um, also, my dad worked, used to be a um, news reporter for CBC. So he's got the radio voice and the, the presence that's required for uh, working on radio. So I, um, I saw him do his public speaking. He does a lot of public speaking as well. So uh, not only, and my chip off the old block, but uh, also I, I, I pursued anything, any kind of activity like that. I, mm -hmm. I like public speaking, the opportunities came and not a lot of people do public speaking. So if an event came up, um, you know, there's a short list of people that they would call. And luckily I'm one of those people. I don't mind speaking to crowds. I don't like, uh, I don't mind um, speaking off the cuff. And uh, as long as there's a program and a schedule, uh, you just give me a mic and I'll do it. And I, I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I look at it as being like a shepherd. So, you know, you go to an event, you don't know what's happening. It's up to the MC to tell you, look, this is happening now and this is happening next and this is happening way down the road. So, you know, your time isn't wasted and you know your time, you're going to be doing this while you're there. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm helping when I'm MC. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I think you and I have that in common. I haven't done it the way you have with the opportunities, but I've always admired what you do in terms of like how friendly you are and literally helpful to so many well, people. I like to do a lot of prep work. Like if I'm emceeing a wedding, uh, any kind of event, I do speak with the organizers and I do require or prefer to have a schedule. Uh, I've done 
weddings where I've literally like bothered the bride to say, look, when is your church service? When, is, when are you guys doing your pictures? What are you guys doing during the reception? And um, I'm sure it's things that they never even thought they had to deal with, but it's like, I need this schedule. And also even for like, um, I, I uh, was um, covering for a, a fireworks in Inuvik and I was like, well, when does it start? When does this start? When does this start? So as long as I have a schedule, I, uh, I don't mind it. So <laughs> that kind of yeah. leads into the next question is what type of public speaking opportunities you've had over the years? Mm, Midway Lake Music Festival. Uh, they've had me MC, co MC with a couple of their MCs there for, I think I did it three times. So uh, it's, it's um, three or four days. So we take different turns for a couple hour increments um, for that. And uh, I've helped with uh, the Inuvik um, talent shows, talk talent shows, um, many weddings. fireworks, weddings. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, I've done, I filled in like last minute as well. Like uh, one of the uh, MCs broke his leg one time and they called me the day before. They're like, can you help us? So I was like, yeah, no problem. Like, not a problem. Yeah. I, I like it. It's fun. Yeah. Um, one question that I'm super curious, curious about because until I got on this show, I had always been really interested in doing some type of interviewing thing like here in the north I've always wanted to do that another thing I've always wanted to do but never even thought of it which even before this show start I wondered how did you do it how did you get into radio as a DJ um okay so I moved to Yellowknife in February and it was kind of during the pandemic I mean we're still in the middle of the pandemic now but like that was in the height of the pandemic and I kind of felt like I wouldn't have very many DJing or MCs, MCing opportunities. So I contacted the CEO of CKLB and said, look, um, I have these skills uh, as for public speaking. Um, do you have anything that I could help with or um, anything in your studio that like I could, I could um, participate with? And uh, that was on Thursday. And on Saturday, he had me help, help with the uh, Saturday afternoon request show with Myra, um, she's, Myra Conrad, she's a professional. She is so good at what she does. Yeah. So I, I, I helped her out. Um, and then uh, I did that a couple of times and I, sh I, I contacted him and said, look, you know, do you think that I could possibly do a show for two hours of just um, different genres of music? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he said, sure, let's try it on on Friday. And <laughs> this coming Friday will be my 25th show. So I guess he likes it. And so do my <laughs> listeners. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, no, I love your show, especially Thank when you theme it. Yay. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. So what kind of shows do you do? I just said theme. Like um, well, I mean, it's a two hour show every Friday. So I can't just play one type of music so I try to go through different either eras or genres um I started out my first show as 90s uh the reason I started out with 90s is um the there is a radio station in Fort McPherson first and called CBQM mm -hmm. I I um hosted a couple of shows on there one for 90s one for 80s so I brought that same format to my new show here at CKLB so my mm -hmm. first show was all 90s uh, and I had to double check every song to make sure it was actually a 90s song. Um, and what I do is with every song is I uh, write down uh, the, the time because I need to have so much. I can only have so many songs per show. Um, and then I did 90s, 80s, 2000s, 50s and 60s, 70s. For Easter, I did inspirational songs um, yeah. for Canada Day, I did all Canadian singers. So um, I change it up. Um, yeah. Where I'm getting into like the 20th show, I'm kind of like trying to not do shows that I've done already, uh, but I feel like eventually that's going to happen. But for now, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's whatever kind of pops in my head. I, I could be at the grocery store and hear some kind of song playing. I'm like, oh, 
oh, we're going to make a show about that, you know? So whatever kind of inspiration I can get for a show um, and still keep my listeners interested, uh, right. uh, that's what I strive for. My favorite one was the fishing show. Oh, <laughs> you know, our, our cousin Brian Wade, that's that's who I had in mind because he's such a yeah. big fisherman. So, so my idea behind that was, you know, if you're fishing, you're on a boat, you, it's, it's so quiet, you're going to play something. And yeah. what do guys like to listen to when they're fishing or women? Um, you know, they want to hear some old country and some like Garth Brooks. And so mm -hmm. I, that, that yeah. was the playlist and, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a good playlist. I think I did a really good job. <laughs> I'm going to tease Brian about that. Oh, he knows. He, he knows. <laughs> I take him. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he has such a passion online for fishing. So yeah. that makes sense yeah but yeah. that was my favorite one. Oh, good yay yeah. <laughs> that was a few shows ago actually that was the yeah yeah. yeah 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 um and then how many shows have you done I think you already answered that I did uh last Friday was my 24th show I started March 5th and this coming Friday will be my 25th show yeah and um guests co-stars you've had some of those you get to bring that into your, your yeah you well I've co-hosted or I've actually filled in for the CKLB Saturday afternoon request show mm -hmm. uh, which runs from 1 p.m to 5 p.m so I have brought in guests for that so like my buddy Herb Nakamiak was in town I said hey buddy you want to come help me co-host so really I just have them read messages um Diane Archie has come yeah. Marjorie Bates. Um, so I brought that to my show in the evening and my friend Terry Lee Kaptana came and helped me with the giveaway show that I had. Uh, I was so busy. It was crazy because between answering phones, taking addresses for the winners, uh, doing the blurbs on the song and playing the songs, it was just crazy. So I really appreciated her help at that time. And I think three weeks ago I had Patrice Stewart. Uh, she and I had taken a trip to Whitehorse, a road trip, 13 hour ride there and back and she's a big heavy metal fan and mm -hmm. I like country and she said no country I said well no heavy metal <laughs> so we met in the middle and we we like 90s so she played 90s yeah. the whole way and she did such yeah. a good job I said how about you curate a list for me of 90s and you could come co-host with me so she uh, co-hosted with me we had such a good time um yeah. I did want her to come back but uh because of the COVID um the recent COVID um um, uh, issue in the NWT we the CKLB is not allowing any visitors so uh, once mm -hmm. that uh, returns back to semi-normal well, I'll, I'll try to have, bring in more guests again that sounds really funny yeah. to hear how you guys decided to do and I, I didn't know that the co-hosts they actually do work like it's not just sitting down talking to a mic and saying okay we're gonna play the next song um, sometimes it is sometimes they just come in and um I have them read from the uh, computer um, because the CKLB does have a Facebook messenger page. So anybody that wants to send in a greeting, that's how they send it in is through the C CKLB messenger page. One of the things that um, my bosses told me right in the beginning was try not to get people to send messages to your personal Facebook or it'll oh. just be flooded. Um, yeah. So I really tried to... Um, push people to use the CKLB Facebook Messenger page. Um, yeah. So when those come in, if I have a guest speaker, they'll just, uh, there's a secondary computer for them and uh, you could just read off it. Not everybody spells words properly. So it's sometimes it's a struggle <laughs> if you're used to just reading. Um, but you yeah. know what? It's fun. And uh, they, they want to send their greetings out and this is the place to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it creates connection between yeah. all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what is your typical show creation process? Um, okay, so I usually think of um, a theme or, uh, yeah, usually a theme. So this coming Friday, uh, it's going to be all fiddle music. Um, that's a new for my show. Um, the reasoning behind it is that right now, there's an outbreak of COVID in the NWT and a lot of people are at home um, isolating. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know, if you're going to be stuck at home isolating and you want to be entertained, um, they're probably missing square dance music like we are because we cannot mm -hmm. have square dances because of COVID. 
Yes. And CKLB has a huge library of fiddle music. So I uh, went in. I, I don't know any names of songs. Did you know that there's a fiddle song called Maple Sugar? I didn't know that. So, <laughs> so I had uh, I went on Facebook and I asked my listeners to, could you please suggest some music? Bang, they were they had like 15, 20 songs right off the bucket. And I went mm-hmm. into the, the computer. So part of my process is to go into the co- computer, um, check our library. Um, I can usually play between 25 and 30 songs. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a two-hour time limit. So for every song I choose, I have to get the the song um, time because mm-hmm. I can't go past a certain amount. I have to have a certain amount of talking time because people send in um, greetings. I do little blurbs on the songs. Um, people want to know what song's playing. I have to also uh, build in time for that. Um, so I... I I do the list of music, I do the timing, and then um, for every song, I'll do a little blurb, either either the year it was released or um, like a song fact about it or some kind of interesting thing about it. And then um, I get, uh, there's a guy here, his name is Clayton, they call him Sea Dog. Um, he puts the music into the computer for me. Uh, and I show up, my show starts at 9.30, so I show up about 9.15 with my papers that printed off, and um, I sit down. We're not allowed to have drinks or food in the in the studio. Um, I have headphones, and uh, I can, I have a little bit of leeway. I can move songs. If, if I feel like this song's not jiving with the last one, I can move it a little. Um, and then I do my show. I have to sign off at exactly nine, uh, 1130. Uh, the timing's really, really important that I get the timing bang on. Uh, I can't yeah. be too, too late, too early. And then it starts all over again. Uh, I do have to do my own promos as well. Um, I just started doing that. I used to let the tech guy here do it, but he's on holidays. So I do it in this production room actually this is not the studio that I normally work out of but this is our production room so we have a program um I do I talk on the mic I isolate that I bring in a song usually my theme song isolate that put it all together um fix the sound make a package and send it to Sea Dog to uh put it on the radio for a commercial it's uh it's a lot more than I signed on for when I started, but I don't mind it. I, I don't mind it at all because I love what I do. Yeah. And it's all learning, right? And I think it's so fun to learn how to do like different things. Like, yeah. Like the, the technical side. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I did the commercial for Friday and then instead of my, my usual promo music, which is an instrumental of TLC, no scrub. Mm-hmm. I played uh, Maple Sugar <laughs> and uh, <laughs> had that in the background. So so people know that when TLG's Friday Night with TLG comes on on Friday, it should be all about jigging music or square dance music. And that mm-hmm. that's what I want them to associate with is yeah. my show with what I had on the promo. Yeah. yeah. Um, so talking about like how you decide to choose your shows, your audience. We can talk about who your audience is. Yeah, that's, I have a lot of connections back Mm -hmm. home. Um, I'm from the Western Arctic. I'm from Taktiaktak. So I do like 90s music. I do like 80s music and I do like older, older country and 80s country. And that's kind of what people at home listen to. So At times, I feel like my shows, I'm kind of tailoring to people from back home. So my 90s, my 80s show, my country shows are all um, with people at home in mind. In saying that, I can't please 100% of the people 100% of the time. So sometimes like last week and I played like brand new music, um, like like top 40 stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, you know, obviously you know, somebody that uh, is used to listening to Reba McIntyre isn't going to be too thrilled with hearing uh, (laughs) Nikon, you know, or whatever. Uh, But, but that's, 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 that's the nature of this job is I'm not going to please everybody. Like Mm -hmm. fifties and sixties, I had a, one of my cousins said, I'm not even tuning in. I don't know that music. I don't know what it is. Uh, But yet Mm -hmm. I had older people texting me and saying, I love the show. So you get a little 
you get a little bit of like yeah either loving it or hating it or or being neutral about it and and you know that's that's I can't cater to everybody but I I can hope that like I'm pleasing half the people at least I was just gonna say I was just gonna say people just need to like appreciate because this is what I appreciate and in doing this show and appreciate you what you're doing because this is new to both of us um Mm -hmm is that we just get to have the opportunity just to be here and just to be able to do it. So even though it's not going to be ideal for every single person, it it is going to make connections with other people and other people can enjoy it too. Well, after hours, when CKLB doesn't have hosts, they have a program that takes uh, the last 30 days of music programming Mm -hmm. and it, um, it just, cycles them and plays it by itself without a host Mm -hmm. so if I wasn't here Friday nights it would just be the program playing whatever so Mm -hmm. at least at least on Friday nights with my show I can curate um two hours of entertainment for anyone that tunes in Mm -hmm. yeah and that's better than having to hear a familiar voice too Mm -hmm. like be like oh I know this person which makes it always more exciting and that's what Um, I was going to yeah, I was going to say, I have listeners that tune in from BC and other like southern provinces just to hear names from when people call in and do their greetings. Like I want to say hello to John, Jack, Jill, whoever. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I know those people. And it's just like a way for them to reconnect <laughs> to people back home, yeah. um, not just from the music, but also even in between the music when I have greetings coming in. Um people back from from back home that are south or away from home like I am um they tune in just just to hear that familiarity of of certain names and um I I appreciate that because I didn't realize that was a thing till people started telling me like I literally tune in just to hear names of people from back home so that's nice yeah um so you have an audience all over (laughs) sounds like it a little bit I don't know a lot better I don't know about that because I know I have apparently back home. uh, My show is a hit. Uh, I haven't been home since I moved, but I find that I'm always trying to bring in listeners from Southern NWT. So from Yellowknife and past, because once you get to Yellowknife, people here have serious radio. um, Mm -hmm. So they have options back home. There's only CBC and 101.9. So, uh, and also in the South, like, say hey river and and past that i don't know if they're tuning in because i don't Mm -hmm. get a lot of them um sending greetings and things like that so i don't i don't know if they're listening but i know that i'm getting more and more callers from like the satu and um also uh like copper mine and cambridge bay they're tuning in as well um mm -hmm. we don't our our radios don't uh, radio towers they don't go as far as like the Yukon like if they can tune in from the Yukon it's just fluke because we our signal doesn't really go that far uh, mm-hmm. they can tune in live through cklbradio.com and there's a button at the bottom you just click it and you get live radio uh, through the internet um, so I'm trying to also let people know um, you can tune in live even if you don't have a radio because I've had people say well I don't have a radio I can't tune in you can tune in if you have internet you can tune in um yeah so yeah I was gonna ask you how do your listeners get to engage in the show because I would think for me that would be the most exciting part is that people can when they're tuning in they can engage with you so like, um, what does that look like when I do when I help fill in for the Saturday afternoon request show people can call in um Mm -hmm. right now on my show people can only send in greetings and messages through CKLB messenger page and I read it Mm -hmm. Mm, I think as I get more familiar with the technical side I can start doing more call-ins but like when I do the call-in it's kind of frazzling for me to pick up the phone do my do my music do the blurb do their messages um so I think well my 25th show is coming up maybe on my 30th show I'll start to call <laughs> so, like, so like Colin for me even though I'd be super excited it might be a little bit more work for you yeah 
Yeah. But it'd be nice for people to, to hear voices and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I mean, part of, part of having a call in show too, is like dealing with people that are inebriated and stuff too. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, how do you take your song requests? Like, is it similar to, I don't um, do song requests. Oh, you all. don't do song requests? Okay. No, not, not at, at all. all. No. Um, so my show, every show has a theme mm -hmm. and then I choose 30 songs that go with that theme. And then mm -hmm. I put them on one to 30 and play them in that order. So mm -hmm. if I'm doing like, like all, all 2000s dance say, and somebody calls in and say, I want to hear go rest high on that mountain by Vince Gill. Well, that's not going to match my, my theme or the, 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 the type of music that I'm, or the genre of music I'm playing for those two hours. Yeah. So, and you get a lot of that. You get a lot of me playing like a certain theme and then people saying, oh, I want to hear some um, country. And it's like, mm, that's not jiving with what I'm playing right now. So uh, mm -hmm. I just, I just straight across the board, I don't take song requests. Um, yeah. I did do, in saying that, I did do a call-in show three weeks ago, I think, um, where the whole show was just call-in. Um, and then I took requests, but it was, it was all, country mostly and uh I mean once you get into that that's just another Saturday request show and that's the purpose yeah. of the Saturday request show is yeah. people can call in on Saturdays and I always tell people that like I, I don't take your I can't take your request right now but you can call in tomorrow to the request yeah. show and they'll they'll play your request and your greeting um so yeah. that's kind of a message that I've been trying to 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 let people know about because I still I think people have been listening to their request show for so oh, long because that show has got to be 10 20 years old that the format is well if you're going to send in a greeting you send in a, a, a song request too whereas my show is only greeting so yeah uh, it's getting people to know that uh, that difference yeah. and I'm still kind of struggling with with letting my audience know that I do say yeah. it on the air but I mean still it's still it's yeah. still happening <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I first started listening to your show it was from Seven to nine, yeah. And now it's from nine thirty to eleven thirty. So what is happened? For your is listeners, I, like I guess um, I guess four times a year or something, CKLB has to uh, host the legislative assembly, oh. and they have to they have to play the legislative assembly no matter what's supposed to be on the air. So they had taken over my time slot for two weeks. And yeah. the only time that was available instead of seven to nine was 9.30 to 11.30. So I asked mm -hmm. my listeners, do you think I should move my show to a different day? Uh, how do you think I should handle this? Or should I just move it to 9.30 to 11.30? And a lot of them said 9.30 to 11.30 works for them, especially back home because seven to nine they're still kind of getting groceries they're still making supper they're still like um like farting around at home I don't know if I could say that on the air but anyway <laughs> they're, still, they're still like they're still settling down from like winding yeah. down from the week so 9 30 they're they're at home they're rested they're relaxed they're ready to listen um and you know what it 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 works for so many people back home I've just stuck with 9 30 to 11 30 uh, mm -hmm. I do find, however, that yellow knife doesn't work too well here because um, people here go to bed early. Bed. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, it's you're not going to please every single yeah. person who's listening. Yeah. It's it's working um, for people back home, and that's that's who I want to tune in. So, so I'm 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 yeah. going to stick with it for now. Yeah. Um. Who I wanted to ask you who creates your promos and how do you do? your promos for I, show. I do the promos oh um our my our, our tech guy Blaine used to do the promos for me but he left on holidays so he asked me to uh he started teaching me how to make my own um so it's with a program called Hindenburg I think I don't know if you guys use that there but um it's it's like kind of drag and drop and uh so I do that for the radio portion I I I I I create a, a script mm -hmm. and then I come here and I read the script 
Uh, and I also know how to delete it if I screw up or if I hiccup or if I cough or whatever, I can, I can redo mm -hmm. it. I drag it in and create the song. Once I do that, I create a file and save it and uh, send it to Sea Dog, and Sea Dog will play it on the on the radio for the rest of the week. I do have to try to make sure I do my promos by Tuesday at the latest because I I need my listeners to know what the subject is when I'm playing. And um, uh, if I find that if I go too late that they don't know what's if I have a show this week or whatever so yeah. I take that file and I go home and I'll make a promo for Facebook not every not every week uh but sometimes if I have extra time I'll make a, a movie out of uh, uh, iMovie and mm -hmm. I'll just drop in that file and create drop in some pictures and make a like a little commercial for Facebook my Facebook listeners yeah, um, yeah. it's not technically the best that I could do but it, you know it's only going to play for four or five days so it's nice and if I if I don't have time um I have snapchat so I uh I'll make a nice little promo on snapchat save it and put that on facebook just as a picture um of of what this week's genre or or um theme is and uh with the time the date uh the the program name the theme and the, um and where to tune in so, so besides you called him Sea Dog. <laughs> so besides him, you're doing a lot of the work yourself. Like yeah, our our tech and... plane, our tech plane also helps a lot. But Sea Dog is amazing. Like he's here all the time. He, I think he's been working here on and off for a little over 13 years. So he knows mm -hmm. the programs. He knows he's the knows. equipment. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's definitely a big help to what I do. And, uh, you know, he's so professional. It's just so easy for him. And I'm freaking out. Like, I played a song and it just started going orange. And I was like, what? And he's like, oh, that's just the promo. It's or, it's just the introduction. It's doing an introduction. I was like, oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just like freaking out. And he's so, he's just so... In, he's a professional he knows what he's doing and, and it's uh definitely um helpful to me to have him assist me when I when I need it yeah um what do you do if you're busy on a Friday night like ah. <laughs> you know <laughs> the, the good thing about me just moving here in February and starting this show March 5th was like I had no social life not like back yeah. home or Mm -hmm. Where I was always busy. Like I was always free Friday night here. But uh, as yeah. uh, you know, I start getting to know people. I have been busy like mm -hmm. a couple of times. So what I have the ability to do here is I can um, I can pre-record a show. So oh, okay. so I'll, so like uh, um, on August thirteenth, our cousin Kyla had a party, so um, she okay. requested that I that I attend so I had to do pre-record a show so mm -hmm. I'll do everything I do to prep for a normal show I have the 30 songs mm -hmm. um the little blurbs the timing and I came in here uh I gave them the list they had all the songs ready on the computer here actually I can mm -hmm. show you yeah. and um and then I just read my little blurbs drop it in drop the song and drop the next blurb drop until it's all like one big pro two hour promo tro pro program. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, Blaine will touch it up a little, like uh, fix the timing. And then um, that's it. They just have to drop that in for uh, my show, my, the timing of my show. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's nice. I like it in that it gives me Friday off, but you don't get that personalization where uh, your listeners call in to hear uh, people's names or 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 okay. greetings because because of just the nature of how it's done we we can't have uh, people calling in so you lose yeah. a little bit of that um, of that connection but mm -hmm. uh, it's still a way for me to have my social life back as well so yeah because mm -hmm. I was thinking it's all live and wow as I'm sitting here playing cards with my friends Tanya's in it in a studio providing the music for us so I was like what is she doing every single yeah. Friday night yeah I'm literally here uh I work till 4 30 one time I had a ball game at 7 30 mm -hmm. I got here at 9 I changed in the bathroom and I was on the air at 9 30 11 30 I go home just tired just <laughs> sleepy just like 
Buku, I like I do some Red Bull. I I have some Red Bull when I'm on the show. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah, me I guess... when I first started. Mm-hmm. My first couple shows, I would go home and just lay down, and I'd be like, "It's it doesn't seem intimidating. It, it seems re it's really really exciting. It doesn't seem intimidating because I know the people behind the camera who help, like the uh, the crew. Yeah, but then you are on such a high and like you gotta just be going 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 that was as soon as I go home I'd be just done now I'm like getting a little bit better at it but you do you do get a little bit of like a rush from Mm -hmm. public speaking like when I did the uh emceeing in of the talent show in Anuvik I thought I was only emceeing to like 100 people because it was dark I couldn't see they had sold over 700 tickets so I was emceeing to over 700 people um I think if I knew that I would have been more nervous but uh, to my Mm -hmm. to me I was only DJing to or emceeing to a couple but I did that from I think seven o'clock till midnight five hours of like being on you know and then when it was over I had work in the morning so I was going to go to bed and I was like all the adrenaline and stuff I it took me maybe an hour and a half to wind down I I do still get a little bit of even an adrenaline adrenaline rush doing my show like because you have to be on like you want to have some energy when people are tuned in they want to hear um you know they don't want to hear like hey welcome to the show you know they want to hear somebody (laughs) animated Uh and yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that was definitely me the first few shows and people would be nervous our guests would be nervous and I'd be like it's okay I'm gonna talk to you yeah talk 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 and pull out what you can and then I I'm enjoying your your interview with me like you're making me comfortable I mean it helps that I already (laughs) knew you but you know I feel comfortable answering your questions because you're asking them in such a um a comfortable way so thank you yeah just like we're having a conversation we're just talking which I I'm genuinely interested in because like I said I would love to do radio one day and for me, this was just perfect. Exactly what I wanted. You know, I wish Inuvik would have like a small radio station, like the same way that um, C- uh, CBQM and McPherson does. Tuck has a radio station. Yeah. Uh, Klavik has the ability to to do like radio bingos. So like, I don't see yeah. why they just don't have a show, uh, a radio station in Inuvik just to broadcast locally so that people like you could, you know, take their two hour um, um, shot and, and play what they want and... Uh, I think it'd be a great idea and I just don't know why it hasn't come to fruition yet. You I should get on that. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of looking around and seeing what's what's available, which I had no idea that you can do, but it totally is possible if you mm-hmm. really try to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do a podcast. I would do a podcast and I yeah. would do like, like here, play a card game because I love playing like, like frustration or something. And I would want to listen to people's stories because I did that with Ethel Grubin, like Auntie Ethel. I did that with her and the me and another worker here, his name's Jason. We were laughing so much. And I looked at him and I'm like, this could be a show because she's so funny telling her stories yeah. about yeah. how to shoot a gun and yeah. all of us just love. And I, I, I just thought this could be a show because it doesn't just happen here with me. It happens with all the like when we're gathering together and yeah. hanging out with our little groups, it, the laughter is there. It would be so funny for me to hear the same way I'm listening to you to hear that. So that yeah. would be like another dream of mine. I like that idea. Like even mm-hmm. like like back home when we go home for like Easter to my parents' house, mm-hmm. the house is full of visitors. And then we all sit down at the kitchen table and everybody's got a story. Like, And yeah. it could be a story mm-hmm. I've heard you know, 50 times and it's still funny. And yeah. and we really need, we, we need cameras on these types of events and, 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 mm-hmm. and conversations to, to share them with people. So I like your idea. Great idea. I, yeah. And that's similar to what I feel like um, ICS is doing like more of, I'm seeing so much more little stories and I, I love it. I love hearing and seeing all of it. It's just, it's, it is that connection. And I think that's, that's such a like a, an opportunity here that we can have because it's yeah. so much fun. Um, I was gonna ask you. My next question I had for you was: Do you have another giveaway show planned? And I do. What kind of upcoming shows do you have in mind? Um, I did a giveaway show. I think in July or June, June or July. I can't remember. Anyway. 
uh, it was just an idea for me to um, advertise on the CKLB messenger or Facebook page, my Facebook page, uh, because I wanted more people tuning in. Like mm -hmm. people could tune in if they want, but if they have a chance to win something, maybe they're guaranteed to tune in, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I had lots of stuff donated from my mom and my sister. Um, thank you very much for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. we, we donated a couple of radios or we, we gave away a couple of radios because I know people are saying like we don't have radios. It's 2021. Who's got radios anymore? You know, but yeah. so we gave away a couple of radios and um, uh, some beaded earrings that were donated from uh, my friend um, Lori Robertson. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah. Uh, Nuvik Motorcycles, uh, Lawrence Nando, he donated oh, a sweater. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. really good prizes. So, nice I think I had 12 stuff. prizes, and uh, we had we had winners from all over. We had winners from Snare Lake and um, Little K and Back Home and Here in Yell Knife. And so, based on the popularity of that show, I am going to be doing another giveaway show. I don't have a date yet. Uh, it's the 25th show coming up. I'm thinking maybe on my 30th show which would be in September, late September. Uh, I am trying to get more um, donations in from, from um, either people or businesses. Yeah. If you have anything to donate, I will gladly <laughs> yeah. take it. Um, yeah. and, then, and then what I do is like every sixth caller, uh, and, then, and then I pick up the phone and go, um, your caller one, sorry, your caller two, sorry. This is the way that uh, Myra showed me how to do it. So. <laughs> Uh, and then, oh, yeah, your caller and, six, uh, got, hang on, I'll get your information. And then um, that's it. And I think easy, it's easy to, it's an easy premise to win. But like mm -hmm. the day of the giveaway show, people were sending me snaps of like roomfuls of people on their phone trying to call in. I had a friend, oh. she tried to call in 221 times, like just crazy, oh just goodness. crazy great that phone is just going bonkers and in the middle yeah. of that I'm still trying to do my show and play music it's just crazy so and I mean it was successful and that's why I'm gonna do it again but it's uh it's a little bit nerve-wracking too people must get excited though like oh you should hear them oh my god, I win. Oh my god. It's, it's funny it's funny I love it. a lot of energy a lot of energy yeah um I just giggle <laughs> Like the vision of having someone like send you a Snapchat of someone literally like eager. That must be really roomfuls. Fun. A roomful of like eight people all on their phones trying to call in. It's crazy. <laughs> um, do you have any advice? And I love to ask this question. I love to ask um, either the question, what do you want to see? Or what advice do you have for any about people? Because we have such like a rich culture and our everyone is so individually talented all of us I find that like all of us have something that we can we can give and share do you have any advice for other Indian about people who are interested in public speaking um I would say um like first of all if you're if you're still in school um and your teachers like have you read something at the front of the class like try not to go into it like scared um mm -hmm. it's practice 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 uh practice in front of the mirror practice in the car practice wherever um yeah like I said like you're not so much the the point of entertainment you're a shepherd people yeah. are looking for information I have gone into an event and not known what the heck is going on I'm here for a but why is it not happening what's happening so, mm -hmm. so think of yourself as I'm a, I'm a little help. I'm a help button and I'm, I'm going to help all you people that are coming in. Hey, yeah. this is what's happening right now. And this is what's going to happen later. And um, even as a DJ or an MC, you're helping people in the moment by saying, look, I know you're just sitting there, but let me play you some music. And, and um, mm -hmm. th this is uh, John Cougar Mellencamp and this is Jack and Diane. And I hope you like it. And um, yeah. They're not so much um, focusing on the how you look or anything like that. They just, they're not even focusing on how you say it. They want, they mm -hmm. want the information and it's your job to convey that information. And mm -hmm. when I first started here, one of the things they had me do was read the news for a week straight during lunch. Yeah. And I read mm -hmm. too fast. I was so excited. I read too fast. <laughs> my mom 
my sister, my dad, uh, somebody else called and they all said, are you reading too fast? Like, okay, <laughs> I get the message. Okay. So I would, and it's, and it's important to learn to slow down, slow down your speaking, slow down, mm -hmm. um, the information you're presenting, uh, you have to say it clearly, you have to enunciate. Um, and just, um, I think the biggest piece of advice I can get is if you're nervous to speak publicly, just realize you're conveying a message. Um, yeah. People aren't looking at you. They're not, they're not, they're not like, oh, you have, you have a list. They don't care about any yeah. of that. They, they're just listening for information. You know, mm -hmm. like when you're in a mall and the mall says it's time to close, you're not saying, boy, that guy got a funny voice. You're like, oh, <laughs> he's giving me a message. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so think about it that way. You're, you're, you're a conduit of information, um, but you can still provide that information clearly, concisely, um, and uh, in, a, in a pleasant manner. And, 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 and practice, practice, practice. That makes so much sense because on my very first show with Nunky, I remember I stopped and I was like, I don't know what to say. And I talk a lot in my life. I, I talk a lot. It's a joke <laughs> that I talk too much. But I remember after the show, because it was so exciting, all my family tuned in. My uncle Blake called my dad, I think. Yeah. And he was like, she choked. Margaret never <laughs> chokes. Because <laughs> I said, I don't know what to say now. I went through my questions so fast. And Camille, my sister Camille, was like, it's okay. It'll never happen again. <laughs> no, it happens all the time. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. You get you get pockets of space where it's just like too quiet. And that's, but that's where mm -hmm. you, as a, as a talker, you know, yeah. that's a skill. That's a skill. And, and you yeah. can really just, you can talk about it. Boy, nice soda. I mean, you know, you talk about whatever, <laughs> just fill in the void. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. It, yeah. it happens. It happens more than you think, than you know, like it, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can, I can totally understand. And, and when I got into doing this show and I've talked to this about our um, manager, Tamara, I said it like, I like it, I don't want the show to be about me. And that's exactly what I told you when we were talking about it before the show started. Yeah. I don't want this to show the show to be about me. It's not about me and Margaret and Margaret show. I am excited that I have a TV show. I'm so excited about that. But my goal is to showcase our any valid people. That's yeah. my career goal. Yeah. Is to literally say these are the people that we have and yeah everyone can offer something i guarantee it everyone can yeah. storytelling cooking hunting yeah. like it doesn't matter what it is our yeah. people can do that and that's my goal is to um be able to authentically show our culture and our people yeah. who we are yeah, yeah. so that's oh, yeah. definitely my goal and it kind of plays in with the mc thing like it's not about you it's about giving the information and that's yeah. kind of like what i wanted to do with authentically yeah. show our culture to yeah. everyone else who's willing to listen yeah i, I think that's a mind. great idea yeah i mm -hmm. i i like it i i i'm mm -hmm. totally on board with with what you're doing and i think that's a great yeah. thing because like you said like our culture we have so many people that that have um like great skills and and mm -hmm. and uh, present something to the world and 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 i love that you're showcasing that and um because yeah. i i I was telling this to someone recently, like, I am from the Western Arctic. I'm from Taktiaktak. I'm I'm from uh, the Inuvialuit culture. I'm also part Gwich'in, same as you too. And yeah. uh, I'm very, very proud of who I am. Yeah. I'm proud of the family I come from. I'm proud of my bloodline. I'm proud of my uh, ancestry. Um, very, very proud of it. And uh, I, I love to tell people about where I'm from and, and what we do and um and 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 the little idiosyncrasies of our culture and um and i'm glad that that you're also proud of of where we're from and that you're yeah. you're taking it a step further and, and showing that through um mm -hmm. uh, through, you know now that it's 2021 like through these uh, media of uh like mm -hmm. zoom and, and online um yeah. i wish you all yeah. the best because i think that's a really great idea yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't have even done it uh so like thinking back to how this show started Sorry, making a little bit about the show. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, I'm interested too. <laughs> so I remember like thinking 
I want to do something like that. I want to do something like that. How can we do it? And I remember the old show that we used to have come up to that no longer airs. It must have been like almost 20 years now. It's been off. People still but, watch the reruns, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember Janine Gordon. Gordon. She used to do this too. And she, I remember watching her like on, I'm assuming by the river uh, on the ice road. And she'd be like with a mic and talking. And I was like, how cool, Janine, you used to like <laughs> do TV shows too. And she's like, yeah. And then she shared the, um, the ad for this position. And I was like, oh, I could use a mic like that. And I just clicked on it and I saw the ad. And I'm like, oh, I have to try as shy as I was to do a mock interview. I didn't bring anyone, nothing. I just, I just did it. And it was so exciting when they called me mm -hmm. and it. it was like, yeah. oh, how fun. But it is, it's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could yeah. tell, you could tell that you love what you do and that you have an interest in it. And it's nice mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, we were talking about it and all types of different things that the way the show could go at the beginning. And I was like, I just want to be there for every single one because it is so exciting. I'm assuming that's how you feel too. Um, I get worried <laughs> that I'm going to run out of ideas for my show, but oh. uh, it's funny. It's funny the inspiration that you could pull from anywhere. Like, like yeah. listening to a song in the grocery store. I'm like, Hey, Hey, I could do a show about that, you know? And <laughs> uh, as long as I keep coming up with inspiration uh, for Thank themes you. for the show, I'll keep doing it. Um, that brings me to actually a point that I need to bring out there is I'm looking for a sponsor <laughs> for my show. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, the request show has been sponsored by the Dene Nation for six months, so that means I think the Dene Nation pays like almost about a thousand dollars a month, and that's for airtime. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing my show without a sponsor up to today. It's been a little over six months that I've been here, um, mm -hmm. but I I really I really should find a sponsor. I have I have reached out and I've I've contacted some organizations, and that just didn't work out. I mean it's on top mm -hmm. of COVID, you know, it's, uh, people are uh, having, businesses are struggling. So I understand that. But I, I, since I'm on the platform right now anyway, and I'm uh, hopefully reaching a lot of people, I just want to say that uh, if you wanted to sponsor my show for even a month or two months or six months or a year um, for $1,000 a month, you could get your, uh, your name, the company name can be put in and I can, uh, it's like a two hour long commercial for your business mm -hmm. I can just constantly hype and exactly. hype up and talk up your business yeah so, so just putting it out there because I I am looking so no I'm I'm totally happy that you decided to go ahead and put it out there because you obviously it's a need for you to keep doing what you're doing everyone that I talk to and how I feel about your show is it's exciting and our people are finally doing something on air so I, I'm happy that, and I really, really hope that people take it serious and decide to invest in that, in your yeah, show. Me too. So I'm really hoping that someone, someone hears it and decides to go ahead with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like we blew through 54 minutes. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got one more minute. Do you want to do any shout outs? Any mm, shout outs? I want to thank... Um, I want to thank the CEO of CKLB, Rob Ule, for giving me the opportunity and, and totally trusting that I was going to be okay on air. He, you know, I could have totally messed up, but I, um, he had faith in, in me and uh, here I am 25 shows later and um, mm -hmm. really happy for that. And um, I want to thank my boyfriend, Max, for having patience because I, I do, <laughs> I put a lot of hours towards this show and you know yeah. kind of neglect him while I'm working on the show again and even my friends yeah. in Yellowknife you know uh they they uh they have to wait while I get the show done and um but on the, on the flip side I want to also thank the listeners I mean there wouldn't be a show if I didn't have listeners and uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and trusting that I'm going to entertain them um mm -hmm. for two hours and uh, and I love doing it and as long as they continue listening I'll continue DJing for them mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Tanya. I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. I really wanted to personally hear everything you had to say, all the questions that um, were there. So I just really like to say thank you for being on the show. 
and I'm gonna yeah. wrap the show. Yeah, I really so. enjoyed this. This I think the time just flew. Like I could easily talk another hour. I really enjoyed <laughs> myself. You did a really good job as well, and thank you for the yeah. opportunity for for having me here and talking mm -hmm. about my show. You know, and I hope that people who haven't um, listened to my show before they tune in now, uh, like I yeah. said, they can yeah. tune in live through cklbradio.com um, or they can tune in if they're in the, in the NWT to 101.9 FM. It's every Friday and the show is called Friday Night with TLG and it goes from 9.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Okay, thank you, Tanya. Oh, okay. thank you, Margaret. Yeah. That was fun. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye. Okay.